could set this first channel to a flex machine. I'm gonna turn the time stretch off. Now it's time to get a source sample. These are some samples from Lego Welt. Big ups to Lego Welt. Yeah, I liked that one. And now I'll set the tempo of the project to the source sample, um, but uh, half speed. And we'll throw some trigs down. Just going to make it a little more interesting, and then we'll move on to the next part. So now we need another flex machine. This machine will be responsible for playing back the first recording that we're going to be making. Setting it to record buffer three for logical consistency. Going to turn the time stretch off again. Going to place a record trig and then set the recording source to the main output. then turning down the record length to 16 because that's all I want right now. And now I'm going to copy the pattern so that I can create a new version of the pattern where there's no record trig and we get that real-time sample played back. going to remove the record trick from the second pattern. And place some sample playback tricks. I'll pitch it down for some accompaniment. Maybe try reversing it. some filtering. Try changing up the tricks a bit. Change the effects a little. to chain the two patterns.
to add in a little more variation to this. Okay, so now it's time to add in another recording and playback channel. Set it to the record buffer. So I want this secondary sampling channel to be recording the main output when the primary recording channel or first recording channel um, is playing back its sample that it's already recorded from the first pattern. And I'll be adding a third pattern where this new recording channel is playing back but not recording. So let's get rid of uh, this record trig. I'm going to put this one on ping pong loop for a little bit of variety. Putting time stretch to off and start placing some playback tricks. And I'll chain all three patterns now and remove the current contents of the recording buffers. Clearing the contents of your buffers before restarting your arrangement is pretty important. One thing to watch out for, since I'm constantly re-recording and overdubbing, is you can end up with a bit of clipping, and managing that is a key part of this compositional process.
So when things get a bit overwhelming and I've made a bunch of changes and it's not really what it would be if I started it all over from the beginning again, I'm going to wipe the recording buffers and restart my arrangement. And so now I'm going to create a fourth pattern. I'm going to add some variations and new stuff to this fourth pattern so that when the arrangement loops all the way around, uh, things change up a bit. So let's chain these four patterns. Now I'm going to start using sample locks to more flexibly route the audio buffers through the different tracks and their effects. And you know, this is still a little too fast for me. It's pretty easy to overload reverbs with this technique if you're not careful. There are a lot of little details and a lot of ways the Octatrack allows you to use this technique. Um, but that's the basics. You just have something record when another thing's playing, and then have another thing record when the first thing's playing, and so on. The rest of this video is just me tweaking parameters and seeing what I can get. It's interesting from a performative aspect how the parameter changes will often get resampled.
Thank <laughs> you.